Dream Daddy. Ah. How we doing today? I'm feeling okay. Let's continue. Oh, it's Robert Day 1. I guess it's a day happening, technically, of me putting in that message. Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. Mmm. Dream Daddy. Be your dream. Dream Daddy. Okay. It's loading. It's taking a minute to load. Interesting how my webcam's on. I guess I just have to cut the webcam. Just a second. Don't worry. You can just see me for two seconds. Don't panic. Don't freak out. It's gonna be okay. There we go. That's better. I was like, since I had it on, I had the webcam on on my Desert Child um, scene for a future Sunday Shuffle. It was showing up. Which isn't exactly, it's not exactly very fun. Um, anyway, I get up. Actually, no. Well, we last left. Uh, Geo, your, Geo, your daddy. Uh, he had just had the cookout. He just got, he had just got on dad book and sent a message to Robert. Because I was like, you know what? Let's see what's up. Like, what the fuck his deal is. I mean, it's probably is not going to end up very, turning out very well. Like, that man probably just, I don't know. I don't know. Like he's, like I said, I'm not exactly, like, pursuing Robert as, like, to be my dad, my zaddy. But I was just, like, curious to see, like, why is he avoiding me, you know? Okay. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. Oh, what are we going to watch? Let's watch a game show. Ooh, family fortunes on. <laughs> All right, Nicole, your parents are in the lead, and it's up to you to win it big. Are you ready? I'm ready. They hook the contestant up to a lie detector in front of her parents. Who is your favorite parent? Uh, my, my mom. Ooh, sorry, incorrect. Next question. If both of your parents were hanging off the edge of a cliff, which would you save? Uh, this is this is terrible. I love it. I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch. Huh. Well, I guess it's time for old chef your daddy to cook. <laughs> chef your daddy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Time for old chef your daddy to cook a gourmet delicacy. Oh, up my mic a bit? Hold on. See, because I did adjust the sensitivity the other day because I had a lot of sound going on last night during the live show. Just a second. Ah, ah, move. Ooh. Okay, it might be too strong now. Hold on. How are my levels, Luigi? How are my levels, Luigi? How about now? Luigi's. Luis? Yeah, I'm having like drop frames, but it's like a low amount. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I'd like to know whenever the, the frames decide to drop out. Better? Good. This is closer to, like, what it was, I think. So I have, like, okay, just a little bit of background information. So on my Yeti mic, I have a marker. I had marked um, from when I first set the sensitivity. But that one's, like, very sensitive. So you can hear, like, everything. So I turned down the sensitivity since then, but I haven't marked it. 
So I, I should mark this place right here where the where it is at this point. Anyway, but get them come 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 come. Okay. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old chef your daddy to cook a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Hmm, make a sandwich, microwave some eggs, mustard mustard jar. Ugh. I'm making a sandwich. I make a sandwich and it's in it's entirely while standing there. Who needs plate? I guess it's saying uh you make a sandwich and then you eat it. I've done that. I, I actually do that a lot actually. Like I'll make the plate and then I eat it while I'm still in the kitchen instead of just coming all the way back to the room. Cause sometimes what I end up doing when I eat and it's something I'm being more careful about now, during COVID is like if there's food on the stove while I'm fixing my plate, I'll take like a spoonful of the of it like while I'm eating. Like while I'm making the plate and I'll be like, Okay, I put the meat on there, okay, get me some for me while the thing microwaves. And like that's not good because like everybody in my house goes to different places and interacts with different people and then we come back to this house. So I mean, and one, it wasn't really ni like hygienic to do in the first place, but it was something I was used to doing as a kid. Um, but so I'm trying not to do that anymore. The sandwich, a lost art. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire. Oh my god! Oh, he made the plate, and he called it the sandwich. But he dropped the whole thing on the floor. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still... Oh, no. This is nasty. That's nasty. Five second rule, right? No. 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 Yeah, you're a wreck, dude. You could have just made another sandwich. Oh, that's so gross. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that will hang off of a door. It would really bring the living room together. What? I wonder where I put that. I spend a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on, this lamp! I still need to watch Space Jam. Uh, I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And welcome to the jam. I pull up the, from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. Oh, he juked on somebody. Anyway, And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. <laughs> no look behind the back hook shot no look behind the back hook shot everyone's on their feet something something space jam <laughs> dad I turn around to see Amanda standing in the doorway her eyes are a little puffy almost as if she'd been crying hey Amanda Panda are you hey Amanda Panda you alright what are you doing? I uh found the hoop and I'm taking it to the hole. And I'm taking it to the hole. Uh pa pass me the rock. Laser the ball to Amanda. Granny tossed that apple. Put up a brick. I mean laser the ball I should be like the whew. I forgot there's no camera. It's just woof. With like the, a chess pass, I guess. I don't sport. Um, put up a brick with just me like do it myself. I'm going to granny toss it. I lead the league in blocks. Set the record for rebounds in my rookie year. Think you can handle this? What's a rebound? Oh, uh, when someone misses a shot and the other players try to retrieve it, that's a... Just kidding! Amanda zigzags past me and tips a layup into the hoop. 
out of four bitches. Amanda, language. Sun Tzu didn't care about language. I would argue that Sun Tzu cared very much about language. So once you write something as... So once you write something as timeless as the art of war, then you're allowed to swear. Amanda sticks out her tongue and dunks for another two points. Seriously though, are you okay? You look like you've been crying. Oh, dude, I'm cool. I just saw like this really cute dog on the way home and it let me pet its belly. I couldn't contain my emotions. She's lying. She's lying. But if I straight up ask, she's not going to answer. So I'm going to ask her about the dog. Gladly. She was a little French bulldog named Jacqueline, and her tongue was permanently stuck out of her mouth. She had a little sweater on. Wow. Probably also would have cried if I got to pet her. She was so excited for tummy rubs. Oh no, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. Now I'll ask. You know you can talk to me about anything, right? Yeah. That's why I'm talking about my love of French Bulldogs with you. Okay, just remember that it's okay to be sad. And also remember that I love you very much. And only want what's best for you. So, okay, you know, I was sure there was like some story to this. But like, it's pretty clear to me. It's like, oh, you come in because it's a, a dad dating simulator. But in reality, it's a, it's a, it's a story of being a dad and like trying to figure out this like this last leg of the journey like it like it seems like it's pretty well written outside of like the oh i'm dating i'm looking for my daddy like anyway i actually like that i like the like i like i'm like one i'm like get to the dads but also at the other hand i'm like i like what i'm getting here of like this relationship of like single like daddy daughter relationship of like this is who my kid is. I'm concerned about my kid. Something's going on with my kid. It's her senior year. We just moved. Uh, my husband's dead. Um, she, he, she's dealing with that. And, like, I'm living by myself. So I'm trying to figure this shit out as well. And, like, trying to, like, m live past, past this stuff and, like, prepare for her departure once she graduates. I like it. All right, all right, geez. Don't make me cry again. Oh. Okay, just just making sure. Maybe you should be less concerned with my face and more concerned with full co court press. Amanda and I played ball for a little longer. Then we cooked dinner together. We managed to not almost burn down the house this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. Okay, let me get the voice together. Let me drink some water for this voice. What you have in front of you, in front of you, is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi glace with cream flakes, of course. I don't fucking know. Yeah. This is literally a jar of baby food. No, let me be more, more pretentious. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. <laughs> Looks the camera. Yes, we're bad people for watching this. Okay. After, not the stream. I'm talking about these reality shows and stuff. After a few more episodes, Amanda goes to bed. I check my computer one last time. Still nothing from Robert. But it says he read my message. Is he ignoring me? Eventually, I climb into bed to get some rest, but I just can't stop wondering why Robert won't message me back. It's weird. It is kind of weird. Like, bro, own it. Like, we ain't have to be weird. Just own it. Uh, maybe if you were hotter. Damn. But hey, I mean, C's not a good rank. rank. That's, like, pretty low, actually. I don't know how I fucked that up. I don't, like, it might not, I think it might just be, like, I didn't fuck it up. He fucked it up. 
I don't know. Or maybe I was, maybe I should have played hard to get and that like, anyway, anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Hop off the dick. Keep moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awful. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupon! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has. She probably has headphones on. Amanda. She yells through the door. What? I have something. I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I had I had a father, please. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with these voices, dude. <laughs> I hand her the envelope, which tears. Oh, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me. It fits out a piece of envelope. Actually, that made my teeth hurt. <laughs> oh, that's gross. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe it. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! <laughs> oh! I got in! I was like, that was really loud of me, actually. Um, Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview. And your photography is incredible. Oh, no. Wait. Dad? I know this one's really expensive. And it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Mm. Wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foiled wrap, foil wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. That's a good kid. I thought she was gonna be like, anywhere? We go in, we go in to have steak. And I was like, mm mm. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. I know you know I'm a simple gal. That that's my daughter right there. Just give me a re just give me a burrito with a few. I wouldn't call it a burrito to save my life though, but I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch... Oh, sorry. My tray's moving. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes. And there are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we all and we get all the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate could be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Hmm? Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. 
We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Oh my god, I would never, I would never do this. Huh. Car ruled. Yeah. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying, oh, they let you have animals in the dorm if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. Oh my god. <laughs> I think that must that must be your, your your father over there. May he rest in peace. Empower. Okay. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake? Or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit though? Oh boy. I think I'll leave that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her. But I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but... I need you to not get out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. And I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it stay sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Aww. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. She got into her school. Yes, I do have dad. Oh, I got messages. Oh, no, this is just who's online, isn't it? Oh, no, it's messages. Hey, buddy. So I have a favor to ask. Robert invited me over for dinner. What? And I know it's kind of a faux pas to invite another bro, but I've known the guy for years and I still can't get a good read on him. And I know it's going to be super awkward if I go to go by myself. Will you please come with me? I love food. I especially love food that's free. And I don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking, but sure. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. I, I didn't type any of this, by the way. I really hope that's a sweat of relief. Okay, so we're going to Robert's house. Maybe he'll... I don't really... like. It's, I'm here to support my bro, Craig. Catch up with an old roommate. Maybe find out if anything happened with the old roommate. We're going to eat that dinner. Oh man, I don't know how to feel about social time with Robert. Still, I guess free food is free food. Yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. Craig and I decided to meet up before heading over to Robert's place. Look at him. Look, just look at him. Also, this is what, but this is what you wear to dinner. To dinner, somebody's house. Oh, I just got up from a run. Okay, Craig's waiting on my porch. Bottle of wine, white wine in hand. Dude! Geo! Boy, am I glad to see you, bro. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Bro. Bro. There it is. Likewise, man. Classy of you to bring wine. Oh, it's not wine. Sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Or at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm generally unsure if he was telling the truth or not. 
I can never tell with him. Then God is not just me. I never know. He's so deadpan about everything, man. I usually just laugh it out, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start ro walking over to Robert's house. Does Rob even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave properly or hire in his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two, f those two first. One time, I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. I mean, it was at the very top of the trash can, but like sitting above it. But still, if he were on trial, I think the jury would define that as in the trash. In his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. No, I have not. The tra Once it's in the trash, it's dead. Anything that goes in the trash is dead. Or it requires a lot of cleaning if it's not food. And you can't, can't clean paper. So if a paper goes in the trash, it's gr if I feel gross pulling it out of the trash. Well, yeah. I think we've all considered it. But the difference is that Robert actually did it. True, maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're holding ourselves back. Mm -hmm. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell won't chime. Hmm, must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does, since when does Robert have a dog? I don't know. That's, that's weird. What is this weird? This voice. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> I can hear Robert just inside. One second. I don't... What was this voice? No, all right. I gave him Ozzy. One second. One second. This is uncharted territory, Geo. What if he's the one making barking noises and there's no dog? Don't say that. We're not even inside yet. Finally, the door opens. Robert looks pretty stunned to see me and quickly adjusts his posture to try and hide it. I gotta get that face of surprise. Gotcha. I live in this neighborhood too, bro. Get over it. This is gonna be weird, isn't it? Geo, didn't know you'd be talking alone. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Come on, Craig. I can leave if there's not. N no, it's fine. Come on in. Wipe your feet. Wipe your feet. Uh, wipe your feet. Something like that. I don't. Clearly, I'm not a voice actor. I just like put. I like pretending. <laughs> we enter Robert's living room, which is a lot more inviting than I remember it being. Make yourself. Ah. Uh, make yourself at home. We can still hear barking from the other room. I didn't know you have a dog. I didn't. Ah. I didn't know you have a dog, Robert. Robert, bro, 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 dude. I didn't know you have a dog, bro. I don't fucking know. I don't know, bro. These voices are all over the place, and it's a bit. Whereas, I feel a little bit bad that I can't just keep it in one place. Well, yeah. That's Betsy. Have to put her up when guests are over. She'll calm down in a bit. What kind of dog is she? Pitbull. Rested her from a dog fighting ring a few back years back. She hates strangers. If I let her out right now, I would probably have to take you both to the ER. Greg and I make eye contact. He raises his eyebrow at me. Oh, okay. But, uh, I gotta go finish dinner. Made us os also busco. I don't know what also busco is. Robert leaves the room, presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Was the dog fighting, uh, was, was the dog fighting thing real? Or, or was he, or was he kidding? Dude, bro. What's. Was, I don't fucking know anymore, dude. I'm so off. I fuck. I gotta. I gotta figure out a voice for Craig that I can keep. <laughs> dude, bro. I don't know. What? 
I mean, I could do my initial idea of just, like, hip, making him, like, the one country one. What's also... Uh, wh what? What's also Busco? Buco? I don't know. Did he make up that word? Until I have also Buco in front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taken in Robert's living room. Are we about to get sawed? Nah. Uh, usually, you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one. Although we did look pretty shocked, he did look pretty shocked to see you. Maybe you being here threw off his plans? His murder plans? This is so weird. Robert finally walks to the room, carrying three... Let me also think about me in this bad voice acting. It's also me switching characters and, like, switching voices back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> so, you gotta keep that in account when it comes to these bad voices. Robert finally walks into the room, carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have a dinner table. Don't trust him. So we don't trust the dinner table. Wait, the fuck? Who the fuck did I fuck? Like, who's, who's this guy? Don't trust him. We in here. Also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. But you got a kid. Like, you ain't got plates. You got a kid. Robert sets plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat. Maybe. Lots of sauce. I can make out some vegetables. Think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. Guess there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Oh my god. I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender and the risotto, I think that's what it is, is so creamy. Robert, this is really incredible. You cooked this? There's a pregnant pause if Robert formulates the response like it's weird to get a compliment from me. I fished it out of a dumpster behind a restaurant. Or at least I think it was a restaurant. Can you believe people just th throw this stuff away? I almost gagged. I look over Craig who looks wary but still has his mouth full. He gives Robert a thumbs up. Glad you like it. Where did you learn how to cook like this? Oh, sorry. Where'd you learn how to cook like this? <laughs> okay, there we go. Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decide to play along. You lived in Spain? After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe. Crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple old jobs. Wherever I could to scrape together some cash. Really, it was supposed to be. See, I remember now. It wasn't supposed to be this Aussie. It was supposed to be like kind of Britishy Aussie, like a bit the clusterfuck kind of voice. One, 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 one. One night, I'm de eating dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madrid. I go to pay. And realize, there it is, there it is. I think I remember now. It's been a week. It's been a week. I go to pay and realize I, I've spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I'm in the middle of ditching this, of ditching when the manager catches me, puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much, they offered me a job. Why not, right? Started living with some distant relatives on my mom's side. Over the course of two years. What the... Okay, it's a mess. This is a mess. These voices are a mess. I can't get a mess. Okay, let me let me try something real quick. Please hold. I really want to get these voices right. Not right, but I want to, like, try to get something... Like, a consistent voice for for these people. I, I think I'm having the hardest time with these two. And then I have, like... Yeah, I'm having the hardest time with Craig and Robert. Please hold. I'm going to put the little pictures up again.
Okay, I think I have one for Robert now. I think I'll do a bit like lower register, some lower register work. Try to go for like a north northerner accent, even though it makes no sense. He's a, like he's American, but I don't want to do. I'm Batman. I'm Robert. I'm Robert. Over the course of two years, I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna try to like I'm gonna just give him a northerner accent. Try something like you know like cool guy, British guy, kind of like over the over ah see I, I lost it just that quick hold on over the course of over the course of two years I worked my way from but fuck it I'm oh I'm giving up <laughs> over the course of two years I worked my way from bus boy to sous chef to to sous chef learned a lot Craig and I wait for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back to the state? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for safe passage in the crew car quarters of a cargo ship? Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore, but this food's so good, I kind of don't care. Plus, Robert is actually talking to me like we're two people in the same room, which I guess is nice. That's amazing! It really is. To be totally honest, I wasn't exactly expect expecting government gourmet government gourmet food here, especially not served on paper plates. Don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. Maybe I could do that. Hey, uh, it's Robert. The food should speak for itself. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. Hey. <laughs> This guy. I mean, he does have a little like. Jeez, don't these people know I'm streaming? There's this fucking noise on the street. Anyway, there's also Buko is screaming for itself. Paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. It's gonna be like northern and like this weird Britishy thing going on in my brain. It it's gonna be a mess forever. Just you see Robert on the screen, it's Robert. It say Robert here instead of Craig, it's Robert. Hmm. Hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? They're legit just like racing up and down the street. For what? To measure dicks? I don't fucking get it. Okay. No problem. But save room for dessert. I made lemonberry saverin. Well, aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Surprises. Robert winks. There's a wink from Robert. Look at that. You bet I am. You can come over. You can come over for dinner anytime. Craig. Oh, that's rude. Um, uh, I'm gonna go get second. Me too. That's rude. He's like, you can come over anytime, Craig. Like, oh, see, Robert doing this shit. They doing this shit to me on purpose. He's like. Playing hard to get, I feel like. Like, he's like... Or, like, either playing hard to get or, like, he's, like, disposed. Like, he, he did what he did with me. And he's like, I already did that. I don't go... I don't go backwards. I'm moving on. I don't know, bro. This is annoying. Like, I mean, this ain't... This is toxic. Whatever the fuck's going on here with Robert, it's toxic. I don't... Like... I'm, like, curious about it. But, like, it's not good for me. This can't be my zaddy. So I'm a key, I'm saying zaddy. I don't know why. This can't be my this can't be my dream daddy. After consuming way more Uso Buko Oso Buko than my body can handle, and then really ensuring a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever Saverin was, Greg and I decide to head out. Thanks for coming. 
I'm making an attempt to be more social. Something tell me he's not going to follow through on this. Man, if you'll have me, I'm here. And the, man, if you'll have me, I'm here. Especially if there's Uso Oso Buko involved. Welcome. You got mail. Oh, it's yeah, this message Amanda. Dad Manda. Hi Gio, it's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. I'm Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. That's adorable. Amanda put a message on here. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why Gio, I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly put confuse me for your for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for a daughter. Though I am of course flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. <laughs> Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is cold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. <laughs> totally holding on to totally holding on to this for later. Wait. Do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation ended. Okay, so that's that. I just wanna see how this went. Conversation ended. Okay. Close those. Mm. But go to Brian. All he's gonna do is just one up me on like his kids like a fucking prodigy. I'm not really interested in that right now. We just hung out with Craig. I could follow with Craig, but let's just you know. I have to just let yeah. Let's, this is where we're going to Matt Sella. Avid music enthusiast. Passionate coffee drinker. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can remember this voice. I mean, because his voice was legit just me kind of like doing a little like monotone-ish. I have a music enthusiast. Passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the Coffee Spoon. Or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no-wave no music. On a Friday night, you are most likely to perfect my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Fine tunes to pass the days away. What are your turn-ons? Multi-instrumentalism. This dude's such a fucking hipster. What did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. I mean, I get that. I, I, I grew, I went to Borders a lot, and like, I was like, not like as a forever job, but I was like, I want to like work here. It's like, I want to work at Borders. And it's not the same if it's Barnes and Noble. I used to want to work at the library. Kind of still do. Um, but it's because I was just at the library all the time. It was like, these people are cool. And they helped me find the things. Like, <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. What's your ideal date? We go to the MA to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. What do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in and over ear, just in case. Both in ear and over ear, just in case. I spend a lot of time thinking about where did the writing commas where did the writing commas and the song titles come from and where did they go did we all just agree it was a bad idea i message him dad tip number 88 pay your bills early please don't pirate games <laughs> uh oh ooh it's, okay we're getting we're getting major drops right now. Just a second. Please hold.
Oh, I forgot to mention though. We are. I'm ending early today. It's just gonna be a short stream. I'm gonna end at six thirty, um, or the nearest, the best place to stop before six, like before six thirty, or possibly slightly after. Um, I gotta get back to doing this homework. So I navigate to dad to Matt's net dad book page and type out a message. Hey man, great getting to see you at the BBQ. We should definitely hang out soon. You free later? A minute or two later, I hit her ding and see Matt's response. Hey dude, I'd be so down for chat for that. I'm actually catching a show tonight at the Sound Garden. Want to come out? What what's a Sound Garden? Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? It's a concert venue, but also a band that I that a lot of people listened to back when it was cool to have soul patches. While I'm thinking, another message pops up on the screen. Pup is playing tonight. Cool indie pop punk rock band out of Canada. Should be a fun one. I didn't know you were allowed to string that many words together to describe a band. Whatever, let's get out of our comfort zone. I log off a dad book and think for a second. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtracked decades through memories of denim jean jackets and moral panic over teenagers turning to the occult. Oh God, I had a mullet back then. Oh God, I thought it was cool. Oh God, other people thought it was cool. I finally remember the strange 80s prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envisioned all of the airbrush vans in the parking lot. Man, how did anyone survive the 80s? How did anyone survive the 80s? Yeah, it's always going to be a bit droppy because Surface Pro 6. Okay. So I haven't been to a concert in a long time. What do you even do at concerts now? I spend most of the day pacing around the room and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool, at least relative to a bunch of other dads my age. Dad, what are you doing? I look over and see Amanda at the door, just getting home from school. Anyway, what's up? Amanda, how do I be cool? Let me put on a pot of coffee first. This is going to be a long night. No, seriously. Matt invited me, invited me to a concert, and I don't think I've been to one since you were born. Yeah, you have. It took me to one when I was 12, remember? I'm suddenly overwhelmed by a memory of a sea of screaming preteens. Oh, that's not the same. Oh, oh God, I tried so hard to forget. The one where I had to camp out with you in line so that you could get a good spot, and then you cried and screamed the whole time? Dad, it was so much more than that, and I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed? You seemed pretty ashamed when I found all those drawings you made of those dancing boys kissing in your trapper keeper. Yeah, well, you didn't find the good stuff. Anyway, you should be all set for the concert if you, if you remember that. Just bring a big glittery sign and cry a lot and you'll fit right in. Well, it's a smaller place. I think Matt mentioned that they're a punk band? Like, DIY... Like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening on my screen? All these letters. What the fuck do they even mean? Like, DIY gutter punk? Thrash? Straight edge? Come on, Dad. Give me something to work with here. Are they post-punk? Proto-punk? C-punk? Jeremy punk? What... <laughs> What's Jeremy Punk? I made that one up to see if I could get away with it. They're not positive hardcore, are they? Um, he said they're Canadian punk. Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendship and politeness as court to the tenets. Of the punk scene. Well, punk is kind of a big genre that might not be as dangerous as you think it is. 
It became so much more than just counterculture rebellion. What I'm trying to say is just enjoy the music. That's it. I mean, yeah. It's not like you're gonna jump into the mosh pit or anything. Well, that's comforting. And if, and if a strange dude in a set your goals hoodie offers to buy you merch, don't accept it. And definitely don't go on three offer dates with him afterward where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. What? Never mind. Just have a blast tonight. I show up at show up to the coffee spoon at eight in what I hope is concert appropriate attire. I see Matt out front locking the door to the shop. Hey, you made it. Ready for tonight? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I definitely know what I'm talking about. You better believe it, fellow live music lover. Grab those ticks and let's mosh that new. <laughs> What? New? Short for venue? You know, where you go to see dope concerts? Are you just making stuff up right now? Ah, oh, man, I gotta admit, I haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks were cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. Did your daughter make you take her to one of those boy band concerts where everybody holds signs and scream cries? Yeah. I got two lined up next month. I still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. But dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time. This is going to be awesome. Just hang with me, Gio, and you'll be so good. This scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question. Shoot. What is scene? Sorry, sorry. It's just weird because scene can describe a music scene as it pertains to a community of people who like the same genre, but can also describe a genre of music no one wants to admit they're in, they were into. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. I wish I could go backwards. Matt looks off into the distance. He says nothing, but I can tell he's thinking never again. That's confusing. You'll get it. The important thing tonight is that you enjoy yourself. Come on. Let's head to the show. After waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves in a small venue with a stage at one end and the and a bar at the other. Most people here are close to Amanda's age than mine. I suddenly feel, feel very out of place. My waning youth is showing. I'm suddenly aware of my mortality. When were the good years of my life? Will Amanda still love me as we both grow older? Wait, is C-Punk actually a genre? Matt, you made it! A younger kid runs up and high-fives Matt. The young kid runs off and Matt turns to me, shuddering. I get nervous when people surprise high-five me. Me too. I'm like a small animal. Loud noises and large gr groups of people frighten me. Do you also en enjoy curling up in a patch of sunlight to take a nap? Hey. That's my favorite thing to do. A couple of the people notice that Matt's in the crowd and yell hey as well. See, this is the cool guy. With the with the brew, like, get, get you a nice pour over brew or whatever the fuck coffee is. Teaches you about beer. Matt waves and hugs a couple people. He seems really in his element here. Matt turns his attention back to me. I am so afraid of all of these people. Oh. Let's go grab a beer. And I line up at the Matt and I line up at the bar in the back where a couple of the older concert goers hang out. A couple of people notice Matt, Matt and tip their drinks at him. Sorry, I yawned. I almost fell asleep when I was doing homework earlier. Seems like you're a popular guy out here. Like, I was literally reading, and I almost, like, nodded off. Because I was reading in bed. And I was just, like, almost nodding off. And then, like, the paper I was holding and reading would hit me in the face and wake me up. It would, like, flop down and go and wake me up. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. But it's time like these where I realize I can only be charming and funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. And then I become keenly aware of where my hands are and that there's no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. God damn it, where do I put my tongue? See? Well, I've known you for more than five minutes and I still think you're charming and funny. You just wait. We grab our drinks. See, because I wanted to have this rambly thing where like he goes like he speaks a lot and so he has these long sentences. So Matt has like it's like and then you ba 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 and you ba 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 and you ba 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 and you ba 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 and so it's like it's close to my voice but it's like and then this happens and then dream daddy a dad dating simulator and then of course you know the dream daddy a dad dating simulator because of course it is and watchman it uh matt geo anyway uh this scene seems really friendly i don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it <laughs> check out let's check out the merch Oh, you're cute. Matt and I walk over to a small booth in the corner of the room where a crusty looking teenager guards his selection of. Oops! <laughs> teenager, like 19. Okay, where a crusty looking teenager guards the selection of shirts and records. He singles me out from across the room and hops up on his chair. Step on up! Let's give him this one. Get your merch here! I got t shirts, I got tank tops, I got all the gifts and accoutrements. A discerning concert goer of considerable taste might want you. I gesture to myself, my face flushing red. Yes, you. You look like a fella who knows their music. How's about a fine 12 inch long playing vinyl record made and distributed by Pup? Canadi Canadias. Here we go. Canadias premier punk rock outfit. Tally ho, good sir. No. And then I freak out. I go, uh, I sense some hesitation in your voice, buddy. Let me assure you on my reputation as salesman of the highest caliber that this record cannot and will not let you down. Okay, Pablo, you can give it a rest. The teen hops off of his chair and takes a seat. Your friend here looks so I, your friend here, your friend looked lost. So I figured I'd give him the old razzle dazzle. How the hell are you, Matt? Day by day, man. My man. They do that thing where they high five, but also turn it into a hug. Oh, like, okay. I get what they're doing. Your mom doing better? She's still single. If you want to be my dad, I can make that connect. Okay. So this is just legit like a teenager. What's this teenager doing just working here? Jonathan from Queer Eye? I don't know. I don't, mm. What, just because of the hair? No, I'm kidding. It's fine. Um, let's see. And I have to deal with you every single day? Fair enough. Who's your bud? That's Gio. Thought I'd bring out a concert, pal. Pablo leans close to Matt. Is Gio cool? They gotta stop riding on this fucking street. I'm so annoyed. I mean, can't, it's not like I can soundproof a window. So, <laughs> it's always, the noise is always gonna, like, come out. Anyway. Cause like my my room's like nearest to the street is really annoying. Or at least the room I'm in it in right now. Matt eyes me. I am back. He cracks a smile. Yeah. Probably brings me in for a bro hug. My dude. 
I'm not sure what to say. Ugh, yeah, I'm get. I know it's real laggy. It's nothing really I can do about it. It's just the quality of the equipment. They went down the street again. I'm not sure what to say, but give the courtesy to Pat on the back. It's a customary in our society for people you don't know super well, but still want to be friendly with. Pablo's a total card. Kid plays the hell out of a base. Yeah, man. When are, when are we starting our witch house band? You know, I'm out. You know, I'm out of the game. It's a shame. You know, Vacant Vale would have slayed. It'll slay once you start actually making music instead of just printing a bunch of band shirts. We got the sickest logo. While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out the merch. These shirts are really nice. Looks like the opener's coming up. Let's get a spot up close. Matt and I walk over to the stage where a crowd begins to form. The band walks on stage and picks up a variety of strange instruments. Is that a harpsichord? <laughs> the leader, the lead singer addresses the crowd. He has a mandolin slung behind his back. These people also really piss me off. Um, let's see, behind his back. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. My name's Daniel. Let's start the show. Oh, no. These guys. What? Without time to spawn, the band starts playing the most cacophonous noise I've ever heard. Oh, that's not even no. That's not even music. That's just noise. What is this? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks! I put the earplugs in, and whatever the hell is assaulting my ears gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure do seem to be having fun. I guess that's what really matters. Jesus, did that cellist just break his bow in half? I don't get this. The set seems to go on forever. There's no breaks in the songs. And I think one of the band members' job is specifically just to burn poetry on stage. I turn to Matt and start try to start a conversation. So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? What? Ask again. This is funny. So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? What? What? Drop it. He can't hear me, so I just stop and try to enjoy the music. Okay, no, this is impossible. How long have they been playing the same song? 10 minutes? 20? A year? Eventually, eventually, the set ends, but only after the drummer sprains his ankle during his saxophone solo. They promised it was part of the act as he was carried off stage crying. Matt and I both pull out your plugs out. Man, that was something. I promise Pup is much better. I just have a lot of questions <laughs> that I know I'll never get answered to. Oh, yeah. He sprains his ankle at every show. They were being real about that. Let's grab another beer. Man and I work our way to the crowd and back to the bar. More and more people file into the concert space as it, get clo as it gets closer to the main act. It's kind of crowded in here. We grab our beers, and I try to follow Matt back to our spot. But there are so many people that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the throngs of excited concert goers, I realize I've lost Matt entirely. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a sea of hip 20-somethings. I'm lost. How am I ever going to find Matt here? Where's the exit? Are there even exits? What if I'm trapped in this building forever? Am I going to see my daughter ever again? What if that terrible band gets back on stage? What if... Suddenly a hand reaches out to grab me. It's Matt. Almost lost you, buddy. Whew. I got really nervous for a second there. 
You and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me back towards the stage. I can feel myself blushing a little. We finally settle back into our spot and wait for the band to start. Busy place, huh? Yeah, Pup really brings out a crowd. So you go to concerts a lot? Oh yeah, it's one of my f absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're in a room full of people connecting with the music just the same way that you are, that's magic. I suddenly have the urge to pee. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I've never heard it put that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to be. Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. I squeeze my way out of the crowd toward the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had an eyeliner wing going halfway across her face, which was actually pretty good. Which was actually a pretty good look. I'm so proud of her. I make it to the restroom finally, but it's one of those single person restrooms with a line for me outside of it. As I finish my business, the, the band starts. Crap. The people that were initially milling around the venue all crowd up against the stage as Pup plays their first song. How am I ever going to find Matt now? Everyone's rushing to the ma main stage to watch Pup play. I'm sure Matt will be up there too. I gotta get there without being trampled by all these rowdy youths. It's a fucking mini game? Oh my god. Ooh. This is the part of the game where you should be listening. Right, because I have the streamer content off. Oh, pup to I'm getting like snapped a bunch. Fuck! Quit hitting me! Oh uh, no, I missed the heart! No, 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 no! I survived the crowd! Pup, DVP. Okay, I'm writing it down. I'm finally able to work my way through the crowd to where Matt originally was. But he's nowhere to be found. Shoot. Well, I guess I should keep... Look, I'm bumped into from behind and I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in a circle to the music. I'm in the pit. How do I get out of the pit? Out of nowhere, a youth shoulders himself into me.
It keeps moving in a circle. Hey! I guess I'm moving in the circle now. I'm fran I frantically search for a way out, but all I can see is an ocean of views rhythmically slamming into each other. Another you slams into me and I lose my balance. I'm about to topple over. This is it. This is how I die. Trampled under the boots of counterculture. Someone grabs my hand. Someone familiar. I look up and see Matt. He pulls me back onto my feet. Bro, that thing had eggplants and flowers and shit. This shit's hilarious. We must really... This guy really likes us. Like... On, by accidentally surviving the, the pit. That's hilarious. Also, the fact that, like, bro, there's eggplants in there? Ooh, we finna fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're wild, dude. Matt throws his arms around me. We jump back in the circle, bashing into use left and right as Pup plays a killer solo. I didn't know you messed with the pit. Me neither. I can't believe this. I'm having fun. I'm a little mad that I didn't stretch before physical activity. But I'm having fun. The song ends and the pit finally dissipates. Everybody cheers on Pup. Maybe I only get... Maybe I only got pit energy for one song. <laughs> Alright, man. Let's retreat. We'll show these kids how it's done another day. We work our way to a more comfortable spot in the crowd and enjoy the rest of the show from a safe distance. Pup put on an amazing set and basically had to beg themselves off stage after the encore. With the concert over, the crowd starts making their way to the exit. See, yeah, so I put on the streamer streamer safe so that any any content that's not that's like can get flagged, I got it. It's gone. That's why they had the bung -da -ding 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 content ID. This song instead. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I really don't understand what, what's so fun about ri riding up and down the fucking street. Like, there's a whole fucking neighborhood here. You can't just ride around the neighborhood. There's a whole, like, block of streets you can go up and down without even hitting the main street. There's a whole long-ass street that's not super busy. Um, like, or you can just drive down to, like, a park, drive around the park. Why can't I ride up and down this fucking street? It's really fucking annoying. Anyway, with the concert over... The crowd starts making their way to the exit. Hey, I'll meet you outside. Gotta say bye to a couple people. I hang outside the venue while my Matt finally shows up. Until Matt finally shows up. Hey, man. Thanks for waiting. I got you a present. Matt hands me the t-shirt I was looking at earlier. Whoa, thanks, man. Saw you eyeballing it at the merch booth. And I mean, anyone who tears it up that hard on their first time back to a concert deserves a reward. Oh wow, I bet Amanda, I bet Amanda will be super into this. She loves angry punk music. Oh, yeah. Haha, <laughs> see I fucked up. He got it for me, but I'm gonna give it to my daughter. Damn, I fucked that up. I fucked it up. He got me a gift, and I said I was going to give it to my daughter. Ooh, I fucked that up. I fucked it up. You see, it had a little dark cloud. Damn, and we were just on the cusp of, um, what's it, flowers and eggplant emojis and shit? Oh, well. Hey, it's Pup. Hey, it's Pup. Hey, dude, didn't realize you were here. I'm so glad I could make it. You guys put on a great show. Thanks. Well, see you around. Wait, you know Pup? Oh yeah, 
Met him a couple times when they first started touring. Good kids. Whoa. Come on. Let's grab some diner food. Hey, the date's still going, even though I kind of fucked up by giving it, saying I was going to give the shirt to my daughter. This is a bad quality stream. <laughs> uh, I suddenly realized just how hungry I am. Man, mosh pits take a lot out of you. Matt and I walk to a tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in, in a corner booth. So there I am in the pit trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering towards me, and there's nowhere to go. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere I get this idea. I just lean back. And spread my arms. And just like that, I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. Bought him a beer afterwards and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has beautiful kids. Glad you guys worked it out. Yeah, man. Just shows you that Punk's not dead. It just drives a minivan and has, a, has to hire a babysitter. So how did you get to see all these amazing concerts? Oh, I used to tour in a band... We were small, but it got us to travel all around the states. Whoa! Yeah. I mean, we were poor, and we had to scrape a lot together just to survive, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. But yeah, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this built an amazing community, especially in a town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I got that feeling. Plenty of friendly people, especially that Pablo kid. Oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own, and you can tell it's been tough on both of them. I know he looks up to me, so I try to help him whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Thanks. Us single parents really have to look out for each other. For real. I'll look out, at, I'll look out for you, Matt. How's Carmencita? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. It'll be loud and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is that she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. I'm trying to be supportive of Carmencita's rebellious phase, but I guess that kind of defeats the purpose of it, does it? Doesn't it? I think I would be a good daddy-daughter activity. It would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Like what? Big budget remakes of foreign films. Reading subtitles isn't even that hard. I think we just have to strive as a society to be okay with reading subtitles. He and I laugh. We keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely hitting the spot. Man. Being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely feeling. I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Matt gets nervous talking to people, but he's so cool. Me too! I have never really considered myself an extrovert and never really considered myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable in every situation always. <laughs> Facts. Fact. I mean, I, I call, call myself an introvert, but I mean, like, it takes a lot for me to be comfortable. Uh, you're fine. <clears throat> you're actually really easy to talk to. You know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot of, like, we finish up our late night dinners and head out. We walk back to the cul-de-sac, back to our respective houses. Tonight was a blast, man. Loved it. Although I'm probably going to feel it in my knees in the morning. <laughs> you and me both. I uh, don't usually like going out to these alone. It was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Alright, I'm calling it quits for tonight. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. 
Matt called me cool. Damn, we didn't fuck. <laughs> Walked to the house with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head out of her window. Hey, Pops, how was the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. You don't say. Amanda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. Blind leading the blind, huh? Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. Hey, Amanda, remind me which one of us just tore it up in the pit at a punk show and which one of us just spent four hours watching Tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition. First of all, how dare you? That show is a classic. Second of all, you mushed in the pit? Who even are you? I am your extremely cool dad. Also, I got your shirt. Well, Matt got the shirt, but it's yours now. I tossed the shirt her way. Sick. This is going to be great to sleep in. Sweetie, please stop wearing the same shirt every day. Switch it up. Show the punk movement some reverence. This is a truly punk move not to listen to what my dad has to say, to fly in the face of authority and wear the same three shirts on a rotating basis. <sighs> I need to stop being such a good dad. You're learning too fast. All right, I'm hitting the hay, Pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Give me that rating. Give me that S rating. Oh, it's a B. She said, oh, I'll give that record another spin. Why not? I got a crush on Gabe Hicks, who does, like, the voicing for for your uh, Matt. That man is hot. Gabe Hicks is hot and very talented. And, like, I just 100% just objectified him. But, uh, yeah, he's actually really good. He's, like, prominent and, prominent and growing in the Tabletop Barber Chief community. He recently came out with, I believe, a um, some stuff with Taz. I mean, some like class. Uh, that's what it was. Okay, of having class, having like stats, stat improvements not be based on race when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, um, which is actually you know like by having like state stats be certain like upgrades and downgrades being attached to race, it, it creates this hierarchy of racism that does not need to be that does not need to exist in the at the table when people are trying to have fun and just play whatever race they want without it being this like oh orcs are orcs and people believe that orcs are lower or, or elves are higher or drow and blah 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 it's like you have your race let's have it an equal flame like you being a race is whatever race you have and you can play whoever you want and it just, you build your character based on how your character is and their class instead of like, I mean, in class isn't like bard or barbarian, not like social class, social stature. I mean, there's still stuff, improvements to be made outside of like stat, stat, race state based stats. Um, there's also stuff having to do with, um, my brain completely went away. Oh. There's stuff like with barbarians where like there's the belief that the barbarians are like dumb, um, or like primitive. There's certain stuff, like just the term of like primitive is like a bit. It's sus. It's a sus term. Anyway, that's I believe. Yep, that's where we're gonna end tonight's stream. Uh, thank you for actually. Let's do a teaser. Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugh and I were planning to go to an art walk downtown, and we're wa wondering if you would care to accompany us. Yeah, we just got home. I would normally write a link, link letter longhand, but I've run out of distressed parchment paper. Whoa, why can I see Damien Hugo's chat? Am I a hacker? But I don't have a hacker alias. The feds are going to bust down my door any minute now. I've got to destroy this computer. Geo, this is a group chat. Oh, thank God. Do you, either of you guys know how to destroy a computer? You could run Derek's boot and nuke from a startup flash drive. You, But once you've done it, done that, it's best to physically destroy the platter, platter, platters altogether. Uh, um, 
the Victorians are very well versed in information security. Do you do you want to see some art or not? Art is good. Let's go see art. And that's where we're going to end tonight's stream. This Sunday shuffle. Switch switch it up. Um, next week will not be Dream Daddy. Um, instead of Dream Daddy, we're going to play a different game um, that I'm going to decide right now. Please hold.